this faculty at Center for Technology, University of Alabama. I'm presenting before you module 13 of paper 8, which is the paper for women and health. It comes under the subject of women's studies. This module is titled Sexual and Reproductive Health Problems and Health Care, Part 1. It has been authored by Dr. B. Subhasri from Rural Women's Social Education Center, Tamil Nadu, and Ms. Chani Bhambani, PhD scholar, Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore. Recognition of reproductive rights as human rights was the chief agenda, as well as outcome of international conference on population and development held in 1994. The rights-based approach considers right to health and sexuality as human rights, which does not merely focus on specific outcomes. Rather, it attempts to transform the underlying conditions driving distributions of disease and deprivation of rights. The UNFPA acknowledges the recognition and realization of sexual and reproductive health and rights as central focus of development. The prominent issues that pose challenge to SRHR are four, namely maternal health, services related to sexual health and contraception, sexually transmitted infections like HIV AIDS, and lastly, other intimate urological or gynecological concerns, including cancers of reproductive organs. This module deals with first two of these issues, namely maternal health and contraception. Now, regarding maternal health, when a woman dies during pregnancy or within 42 days of the delivery or termination of pregnancy or aggravated by pregnancy or its management, it is regarded as maternal mortality. The health of individuals is intricately linked to the womb in which they are conceived. Thus, Excess efforts are paid towards reproductive health of women. Each year we lose life of nearly 5,36,000 women globally due to pregnancy-related complications and childbirth. Around 20% of the burden of maternal deaths is shared by India. This is very unfortunate. The Millennial Development Goals which are eight in number, also includes improvement of maternal health as one of its goals. That is goal number five, which says that we have to prevent the loss of women's life due to maternity-related complications. The complications that endanger maternal health can be classified in three stages, depending on the term of conception a woman is in namely prenatal or antenatal, perinatal and postnatal. These two, that is prenatal and antenatal, are synonyms. The, post, the most common prenatal complication includes iron deficiency causing anemia. More than 50% of the pregnant women in India were anemic according to National Family Health Survey 2 as well as National Family Health Survey 3. Sepsis and obstructive labor constitute the main perinatal complication leading to 16% of the maternal deaths and nearly 39% of deliveries in India were institutional according to NFHS that is National Family Health Survey report. Three, the optimal care required by weak infants 
as well as mothers in the eight weeks of delivery is crucial for the survival. However, unfortunately, in India, where only 42% of the women receive postnatal care within two months of the delivery. Now, what are the causes of maternal mortality? The primary is socioeconomic conditions. The burden of maternal deaths in poor countries is much higher than that in developed countries. The accessibility and affordability of quality diet and obstetric care connects socioeconomic status to maternal health. So women belonging to low health quantile are unable to access obstetric care as compared to those belonging to high wealth quantile. Then education is also directly related to mortality of mothers. Women's education is positively correlated to availing institutional delivery as is obvious that those who are educated will opt for delivery in an institution. Now India accounts for highest number of child marriages in the world and this impedes women's right to education. Further child marriages lead to adolescent pregnancy that has long term effect on maternal health as well as infant health. There is also one very peculiar observation that the obstetric care in certain cases is underused and in certain cases it is overused. On one hand, institutional delivery is nearly 40% in India. That is underuse of the obstetric care. And on the other, mounting magnitude of profit-oriented cesarean deliveries especially in urban India, pose great challenge and threat to maternal health. This is overuse of obstetric care. So summing up, we can say that maternal health is not merely strengthening the obstetric services, but addressing the overall physical, mental and psychological well-being of women by guaranteeing them right to be mother without risking their life or their child's life. Thus, thorough cognizance of underlying socio-economic and demographic circumstances is essential. After maternal health, the second challenge in front of SRHR is sexual health and contraception. Sexual rights entails the right of individuals to express and fulfill sexuality and enjoy sexual health without any discrimination as corroborated by the human rights framework with due regards to others' rights. However, the access to these rights is facilitated as well as constrained by the existing social cultural norms, laws, policies and economics. There is a difference between sexual orientation and gender identity. Sexual orientation refers to a person's physical, romantic or emotional attraction towards other people. And gender identity reflects the deeply felt and experienced sense of one's own gender. So one must be free to exercise and practice whatever sexual orientation one is comfortable and content with. Yet, the hegemonic heteronormativity impedes people for freely manifesting their sexual orientations of being homosexual or bisexual. Heteronormativity is the view that all human beings are either male or female and that sexual and romantic thoughts and relations are normal only between people of different sexes. 76 countries in the world criminalize and harass people on the basis of their sexual orientation and gender identity. 
This has been stated by Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. Now, acknowledgement of special SRHR needs of these so-called non-straight individuals is still a distant dream, restricted merely to human rights guidelines. Talking about contraception, this term was earlier used with narrow reference to family planning. However, with the shift to rights-based approach, it includes the separation of having sexual pleasure and reproduction simultaneously, guarding individuals from transmitting or acquiring sexually transmitted infections. International Conference on Population Development identified that family planning frame ignores the broader health and rights of individuals by excessively focusing on married women, by excessively focusing on permanent sterilization methods. It entirely leaves out the SRHR needs of adolescents and of unmarried people risking their lives and health. Lack of comprehensive sexual education leads to risky sexual behavior among adolescents. And teenage pregnancy is a consequence of lack of comprehensive sexuality education. About 16 million women of 15 to 19 years become mother every year. And in low and middle income countries, by the age of 16 years, 10% of the girls give birth. India legalized abortion through MTP Act in 1971. But the availability of services in primary health care centers account for only 20%. The socio-cultural factors act as a barrier in the utilization of modern contraception methods like birth control pills, like sterilization, IUDs, etc., often resulting in unintended pregnancy. Nearly 68,000 women lose their life every year due to unsafe abortion, making it the leading cause of maternal mortality. For the adolescents, to seek formal health care for abortion is difficult due to the stigma attached to illegitimate pregnancy. So there is a need to integrate the Millennium Development Goals to annihilate the deep-rooted gender inequality, the harmful traditions and poverty, which would in turn help in achieving SRHR. We have to integrate the five MDG. Number one is eradication of poverty. Number two, to achieve universal primary education. Number three, to promote gender equality. Number four, to reduce child mortality. And finally, number five is to improve maternal health. So by integrating them, we could help in achieving the sexual and reproductive health and rights. Thank you.